Hello and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth and I teach you how to build your spiritual confidence so you can listen to your intuition and read your tarot cards with ease. And today I want to talk about, it's actually a topic that sort of came into my head when I was talking about the last topic, which was naysayers and skeptics and how to deal with them when you tell people what you do. Today, I want to talk about what to do with people who are sort of the opposite of that, who um, want to encourage you and really believe you when, you know, they feel your aura and they feel your energy and they think, yes, yes, I really, really believe that this is something you can do. And I really, really want to know now <laughs> um, and how to deal with it. I, I, I think I might actually start with a story. And I, it was when I first, you know, I've, I've never not been psychic. I've always been psychic. I think even as a child, I was psychic um, and really felt things. Um but I didn't put myself out there until much, much later. I think I sort of, as life went on, I kind of knew I was psychic and I kind of would say to people, oh, I'm very intuitive or I get feelings about things or whatever. But it wasn't really until sort of later in life I just kind of had that calling. It was something I'd always wanted to do and then the timing was right and the internet was in a really good space that I could actually well, be sitting here in my office talking to you. And so I embarked on this journey. And I started going to a tarot um, group. And I was invited to go to this tarot group. Gorgeous set of ladies, very, very supportive. And we were all taking it in turns to read. And I happened to mention that I'm clairvoyant. And just as you do in those sorts of groups and everyone was very supportive and it's so nice when you're in those sort of environments that you have some like people around you that don't you know they're the opposite of what you normally experience and it's sort of unnerving I know um a particular mentor I had in my life that I went to see and she did an interview with me before I did her course and I told her all these things that had happened that had kind of led into me coming out. And, you know, it was, I had quite a profound story to tell. I had something happen that was just really like, wow, you know, now is the time, Elizabeth. I think, you know, you really need to do something. And she really believed me. Other people sort of looked at me and, and were like, right. But she really, really believed me. And that was such a turning point for me. It was huge. So I'm at this, at this um, um, terror study group and it was my turn to read. And I read for one of the girls and I said, look, I'd like to read how I normally read. And that is I read obviously the meaning of the cards because I always teach all of you to know the meaning of the cards, especially the Rider Waite Smith, which is my favorite deck at the moment. Um, I see other decks and I love them, but there's something about that Rider Waite Smith deck that is just I find so powerful. Other people don't, but that's fine. Um, and But I also tune in, and so I told them I was going to tune in. Anyway, I'm sitting with this girl, and I lay out the cards, and I tuned in. And, and because I was, I think, amongst people who, in one form or other, are intuitive, who are supportive, they created this beautiful energy. And... I started reading and I had a very powerful image come into my head and it was just huge. I, I went in this girl's front door, I walked down the hall, I walked into her bedroom, I was talking the whole time and she saying yes. Yes, I got into her room and I started describing her bedroom and it was uncanny. I was seeing things like the curtains were shut. She hadn't, uh, she'd drawn the curtains. The room was dark. She hadn't made the bed. Then there were things I felt drawn to tell her that were so deeply personal. I couldn't tell her 
because I was in a room full of people, which is not good because the things were intensely personal and they were about her. Um, and I really, I didn't know what to do. Like, I didn't know what to do. I really, if I'd been in a reading on my own it, with her, it would have been fabulous. I could have really given her some very deep things to think about. But I had set myself up to really not be able to do what I do. And not only that, I was so accurate Someone went out to all the husbands who were sitting having a coffee out the back waiting for all of us to finish doing our tarot thing and they all came in. So I had the group of girls around me, and there was about eight. There was the girl I was reading for. I opened my eyes and in front of me are all the husbands just staring at me. I was like, I was like a deer in the headlights. I was like, and then I lost the connection and I didn't know how to say there's some really intensely personal things that I want to talk to you about that are really intensely personal and I can't talk to you about them because everybody's here. Like, how do you say that to someone? And then they're like, well, what are you going to tell me? Uh, it was awful. And I had, I had anxiety for a fortnight afterwards because I sort of had lost control of the space. I felt like a sideshow. I felt... I felt this huge expectation because I'd been so accurate and then I stopped. And like I was so accurate, I was describing her room, my colours I could, of things I could see and everything because I got an intense connection with her and it was really difficult, very difficult, extremely difficult. And, I, and, and, and it was supposed to be just a reading where we were learning the tarot. <laughs> So, oh boy, did I learn my lesson. You need to be really careful. And this is where naysayers kind of take you there. You know, skeptics take you there straight away with their, you can't do it, can you? Um, they just, you know, you need to be really careful that you can end up being very ungrounded because you've just really put yourself out there amongst people who are very supportive of what you do. So it's important to have really clear boundaries, especially if you're like me and you kind of tune in and sometimes the other person's receptive, sometimes they're not, and sometimes you've got, well, eight people sitting around you, maybe like a seance, all tuning in as well. I don't know. I mean, I spoke to my my mentor about it at the time and she said, Elizabeth, you lost control of the room and you put yourself in a situation where, you know, you don't get to choose what's going to happen when you go down that pathway of, of, of using your talent. So you need to protect yourself and you need to protect the person that you're reading for. Very important. So I learned, one of the big things I learned in that is that when you're with people who love what you do, they can almost make you unsafe through their in enthusiasm. And they don't mean to make you unsafe, but it can happen. So I learned to have strong boundaries around how I read and when I'll read. Not just for people who are trying to prove me wrong and trying to put me down and be horrible, but also for people who are really enthusiastic about all of that stuff. Sometimes, you know, and to me, if I'd wanted to read for her, how I would have handled that, I think, was probably have said to her, I'd love to do a reading for you and maybe gone into a separate room to have done it and shut the door, which I'm sure like we could have done because the lady that run the group was so helpful. But then, of course, you've got to be really careful. You don't then find they go outside and go, ah! And then the next person comes in and the next person and the next person and the next person. And I've talked a little bit about that, about how to do readings online, that you really need to have a boundary. I am doing this many readings or I'm doing one reading and that's it. Because you'll find yourself in a situation where you can become really um, spiritually exhausted and very ungrounded. So it's very important that you look after yourself so that you're there for the person that really needs you, not just the person that wants a free reading. So having those boundaries. 
I had a friend, actually, all my friends have been really good about it and recognised. I think they all saw me get very bad burnout when I was working as a psychologist. So their headspace is very different in terms of asking me for a reading. But I had one particular friend and she just would not stop. She'd pull cards and then I'd get an email or it'd come up in conversation. I pulled this card. What does it mean? And I would say, well, I've written, you've bought my journals, my interpretations are in there no but I really want you to tell me I really want you to do it for me I want you to tell me and in the end we actually I'm actually not friends with this person anymore in the end I had to say look I don't want to read every time I see you I feel like you just want a free reading out of me and I, you know, like, is that what our friendship is about? And again, it's so hard because you have to step into that space and be really quite assertive. It's, it's hard, but you need to do that to protect yourself. It's really important. Otherwise, you end up in a space where you either lose the friendship and you would have lost it anyway. Someone keeps pushing boundaries like that or you end up just really resentful or spiritually exhausted because that person just, you know, people just keep asking you. So um, I just had to put a boundary in place and just say, look, I'm sorry, but um, every now and then I'm happy to look at the cards, but I'm not going to do this for you every single day. Um, I'm just not. I'm just nipped it in the bud I think and I had to actually say I think you're being really unreasonable I mean you don't ask people you know if, if, you, if your toilet was blocked you wouldn't ring the plumber and go oh can you come and unblock my toilet oh by the way can you do it for free so if I choose to give a reading it's very different I don't respond to people doing this I really have my boundaries in place from it. And as I've said, it's mainly to protect myself and to protect the person that I'm reading for because I never know what I've learnt. I never know what I'm going to see. And if I see something and I can't talk about it with the person because <laughs> I'm in completely the wrong environment and I can't even verbalise it because I've got other people around me, that might hear and that's inappropriate that's not helpful to anybody it's not helpful to me and it's not helpful to them so be clear on your boundaries as I've said if you're doing online readings you'll get people come in and if you're in Facebook live they will you know call you for everything if you don't choose them and sometimes they'll even say you know I come in these all the time and you never pick me you just have to go with who you feel drawn to and say, I'm doing three readings, five readings, whatever, and that's it. Be careful of the location you're in and just be clear, not today, not now, it's not appropriate. And be firm with yourself. Boundaries start here. Set the boundary in here and don't get yourself into that situation in the first place. If I hadn't have said, let me try and tune in and see what I can do, <laughs> maybe spirit was trying to teach me something about humility, you know, because I really tuned in <laughs> far more than I thought I would. Um, so, you know, it, it, be really careful because it's important to protect yourself first and protect the person you're reading for. So that's my little story for today for you to go away and think about. I would love to hear your, um, your experiences in the comments about your um, perhaps people around you who have rather than being naysayers, people who've really, really push the envelope and wanted you to do the your readings for them or been really, really supportive in a way that's kind of been almost too supportive. Take care, everybody. And I will be back again soon with another fabulous video. We've got lots happening on this channel, lots of different videos that are going on at the moment. And, uh, and I can't wait to share them all with you. Take care. Bye-bye.